Welcome to The Craft. I'm your host, Mae Globus. This podcast is a collection of intimate conversations on artistry, mastery, and life with talented, passionately curious creatives and entrepreneurs. Most are dear friends, some are those I've admired from afar. I hope you enjoy these conversations, this exploration of the humanity that connects all of us as much as I do having them. Thank you for being here and for listening. This episode is sponsored by Happy Fox Health, a natural supplement brand focused on sea moss, a marine algae that has 92 out of 102 essential nutrients that your body needs to thrive and regenerate. I've used a number of their products and found it's really given me clarity of mind. Visit happyfoxhealth.com and use promo code THECRAFT for an exclusive 15 to 20% discount off your first product purchase. As a number of you know, I'm also a certified sound therapy practitioner and founder of Oto Healing, a sound therapy studio and practice. Sound has been a healing modality through many cultures for thousands of years. Oto's approach to sound is rooted in both art and science, the art being the history of sound, the science being quantum physics, biology, brainwave states, and more. All listeners of the show get 15% off their first private one-hour session. Visit otohealing.com to book yours now. Rachel Rivera and Claire Ochi are as colorful and joyful in real life as the vibrant work they create together as art duo The Weekenders. After working as applied graphic designers and color designers at Lululemon and Aritzia for a number of years, the two took a leap of faith to start The Weekenders and co-found Holiday together. They both grew up in Calgary, Alberta, with two very different origin stories. Claire was born into a creative family with a contemporary artist father and a mother who managed a design group. It was an environment that encouraged the creativity within her, and she spent a lot of time making ceramics. Rachel was born four months premature in Cebu, Philippines, and came to Canada after her mother met her Canadian stepfather there, and they fell in love. A meant-to-be romantic story. She, too, was artistic as a child and teen, always drawing nature while hanging out with her snowboard crew. Rachel and Claire met at AU Arts, where both of them took visual communications, and eventually met in their fourth year, quickly becoming lifelong best friends and collaborators. During this time, they hosted art shows together and started a vintage shop, among other things. A job offer from Aritzia brought Rachel to Vancouver, with Claire arriving shortly thereafter, also landing a position at the brand. Eventually, it felt like time to follow their own paths with the Weekenders. Since then, they've created incredible murals in urban spaces and collaborated with brands like Spy Optic, Audible, Veuve Clicquot, and more. In this conversation, we talk about their childhoods, their individual art practices, visual communications when it comes to design, learning concept to execution in their corporate chapter, and how they apply it to their art practice today, why Claire and Rachel love vintage and thrifting, what Weekenders means to them out in the world, why it's important to the soul to take leaps of faith and to believe in yourself, how they evolve their art while staying true to who they are as artists, advice they'd give to emerging artists about life, and much more. Please enjoy this fun conversation with the energetic, imaginative, hardworking, and good vibes, Rachel Rivera and Claire Ochi. Rachel Rivera. Hi. Hi. Claire Ochi. Hello. Welcome to The Craft. Thanks for having us. This is so exciting. I know. I'm very excited to have you guys here. You ladies are of the Weekenders. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hello, yeah. Art and I, duo. <laughs> art duo. And you know what? You guys, you and I met very recently. Yes. yes. But I feel like I've known you guys forever. I it's know. really weird that way. Yeah. It was at the last live Herschel. It mm-hmm. was. And my friend Dixon was like, oh, yeah, you know Claire and Rachel, right? I was like, no. He's like, you need to know them. <laughs> <laughs> and he just basically pulled me over. So I'm so glad that he did the intro. Yeah, no, that's Us amazing. Too. We yeah. live such parallel moments, I think, in the city. So totally. I'm surprised we haven't met before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what? Everything <laughs> happens as it should. Totally. And here we are, here a month are. later in the studio. That's, that's wild. Crazy. I love it's it. It's so crazy. <laughs> So how are you guys feeling? What's going on? Yeah, no, it's been it's been a really good summer. You know, we're heading into the fall now doing some fun, fun projects. So it's been good. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling good about how everything's going, unfolding. Yeah, it's it's building into 
a direction we really enjoy because it's shifted a lot. Um, but we're we're into more installation and holiday fun times right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll dive into that <laughs> yes, in a little bit. I know. We'll put a I pin know. in it. I've got lots of questions around that. <laughs> um, but I'd love to go back to Calgary. Yes. yes. Let's go there. Our <laughs> Let's take a little time machine. Love Cowtown. <laughs> yes. And I'd love to know a little bit more about you guys individually and your individual stories and then how they come together. But I thought let's start with let's start with you, Claire. I know sure. that you were born into a, a really um, arts focused family. Yeah, so I was born and raised in Calgary, Alberta, which is the antithesis of that (laughs) but um yeah I grew up in a family that was very artistic and open um my dad is an abstract painter my sister is a fashion designer and my mom also is amazing portrait designer as well um so yeah just like my whole childhood was just building that around me like not even unconsciously I think and I don't think I had a choice in my <laughs> where I was going to be uh, in my artistic um, uh, endeavors. So I think I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, very, mm-hmm. very. That's a nature and nurture. Yeah, and you're definitely nurtured in mm-hmm. in that direction. Definitely. What What are your parents like? Um, they're quite hippie. They're awesome <laughs> and <laughs> open. I don't know. It's hard to describe. Um, they like my dad built the house that we live in um and my mom was pregnant like on the roof also helping like that kind of world um and like just yeah um always open to creative projects like I was like I want to make furniture my dad would just help me whatever it was um so it was just a yeah an exciting creative space for for me and my sister that's awesome Mm -hmm. and what's your sister's um, brand um she she just works for oh other, i see yeah she's like heads the team of I, other designers oh okay kind of thing. got yeah. it got yeah. it got it mm-hmm. and uh you were quite a tomboy i was i think rachel was as well <laughs> <laughs> just a boy <laughs> i think i um was really competitive and i like to challenge the guys in sport even though I was really little I don't know what, where it came from um so that was just I think an observation of the difference of gender of what was happening unconsciously as well so I just wanted to get in there and yeah but you did a lot of yeah. ceramics too so there was like this kind of sporty competitive side but there was mm-hmm. also this really artful side obviously given your your family background yeah every summer my parents would put us in like a I think it was called Calgary Creative School so like it'd be like a little art camps um and I was weirdly really good at ceramics as a child I'm not anymore like it's gone out of me (laughs) but um yeah I could um do ceramics I like won the challenge and got to meet the mayor with my ceramics (laughs) like I still have it it's like a little pig that has like (laughs) I know um a little top hat and um yeah I I should send photos for you guys (laughs) because it's like my prized possession of winning when I was a kid (laughs) oh that's amazing it's hilarious did you what was it about ceramics do you do you think yeah, as a kid, what drew you to it? Um, I think you know why it, I was so much better as a child is you have to be really loose and like not overwork it and then it just becomes what you want. But I think just with age, you become more <laughs> like um, precise, like you want things to be a specific way and when you overwork it, it dies pretty much. And so I think that's where the kid in me has like, gone and that's why so has ceramics yeah. <laughs> which is hilarious do you think you'd ever want to pick it back up and see if you could be more loose with it um just with my creative practice I am very abstract um and I'm more in the painting world now but I do have a 3d mind so some of my pieces do come out in that way but not with ceramics it would just the 3d part is still alive in me I think Mm -hmm. if that makes sense well tell me more about 
what you were like as a kid. I mean, you said competitive, <laughs> but I'd love to know more. Like, um, how did you, how did you operate? How did you perceive the world at a young age? You know, I've never thought about these questions. It's great. Um, so I had an older sister who was quite bossy. <laughs> um, so I actually probably took more of a, a step back role because of just our personalities. I, I was a bit quieter and contemplative. <clears throat> um, but yeah, I, I don't know how to answer this. <laughs> No, take all the time you want. Can you ask the question again? Yeah, just what you were like when you were younger. I like and, as a kid. Yeah, and how you looked at the world when you were, were younger. Like, I don't even know. I think um, I just really like to partner with people. So from a small age, I always had, like, best friends. And I think <laughs> it was just us against the world. So it would just be, like... Um, yeah, just being comfortable with, like, close friends and then just having a lot of fun. So that was just, like, I, I wasn't, like, a serious, like, kid in any way. I just would just try stuff and have fun and mm. nothing, like, super serious, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, and, like, you know, it's it's so interesting to sort of think about what you were like when you were younger and what threads – are it's still apparent too. now yeah. yeah and then all the ways that you've mm -hmm. also grown I feel like I've evolved insanely from what I was I was quite shy and quiet and I feel like the actually since weekenders and maybe a little bit before that I've like definitely grown into my own a lot more so um I was terrified of presenting and talking in front of people and I would just like to be like I was saying being in my little safe space with people I knew um but just being in the corporate world and fashion, um, I had to definitely step out of that and um, get you comfortable and meeting people and presenting and just sharing my ideas. Um, and I'm, I'm actually so happy how much I've grown and where I am now because um, I enjoy it now versus it was terrifying before. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> it just took a lot of practice and yeah. to get where I am. <laughs> Totally. And mm -hmm. I feel like most people don't realize how much practice it actually does take to present or talk in front mm -hmm. of a crowd. And, you know, and I believe that there are people who are super naturally gifted at totally. it, but even they practice and even they get nervous. Mm -hmm. But yeah, once you, I feel like once you realize that the people on the other end, most people are not out to get you. Yeah. That it's <laughs> they're just interested. Be, they're just interested. I yeah, and before I would have to like write everything down and pretty much memorize what I was gonna say so I felt comfortable. But now just with Rach and I and all the random things we do, we're pretty good with being on the fly and just like um knowing we'll know what to do and um trusting ourselves. And so I fine we just go with the flow and it's always great so yeah it's in a good place <laughs> yeah totally well yeah I think the the word trust is mm -hmm. probably the most important out of out of all of that yeah. like trusting that um like it's even worth that you're worthy of being up there sharing your ideas mm -hmm. that's yeah all of it it took yeah. a while to get here for sure yeah mm -hmm. oh well I love who you are. It's Thank great. You. And look at her now. <laughs> yes. I'm talking on a podcast. <laughs> All your dreams have come true. Yeah, yeah it's happening. Uh, Rachel, I'd love to know more about you. I mean, you've shared a bit of your story, which I think is super fascinating. So if you feel like you're comfortable to share what a sort of beautiful story um, you have from your, your childhood, I'd yeah. love for listeners to know it. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, my childhood is a bit different from how Claire's was. Um, it kind of came from, yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, where that phrase comes from, where it's, uh, well, now see the phrase is gone, but when you're just like, <laughs> <laughs> everything's meant to be where it's meant to be mm. kind of, kind of element. Like that's, that's how I feel like I came into this world. <laughs> um, so I was actually born in Cebu, Philippines, um, and grew up in Bohol, which is a smaller island. 
um, that you take a little ship from the Cebu to, to there. And I grew up with my grandparents while my mom stayed in the city to work. And um, when, and then she became a single mom um, and she worked in the hotel and, you know, we're just all doing our thing. And, oh yeah, I was also very premature growing up. My mom didn't even know she was pregnant with me. Um, she had my sister who was like the hugest baby ever when she was born, like nine pounds. <laughs> and then she thought that there was um, just, you know, the excess post-birth tummy, but uh, I was in there, and I was, uh, she was bowling, she used to be in a bowling league, and then her water broke while bowling, bowling and she she was in a tournament, she's like, I think I have to go to the hospital, I'm giving birth, and they're like, what, and no one knew, and then I came out, like, in two minutes, I was two pounds, I was four months premature, and then they were like, you're not gonna make it, and so um, I was in an incubator with all the, you know, things for about five months and they like they were like she's not gonna make it past past a year and then uh they made like a little tombstone or like a coffin or whatever for a baby and then um and then I, I made it past a year and then they were like well she's not gonna make it past because of all these you know didn't get all the the things you need in the tummy and then uh um, kept going and then I just kept going so then <laughs> this is like year year four and um, we're there and then my mom is working at this hotel in Cebu and um, so how we are here now in Canada is uh, that my stepdad who is my dad he's my real dad you know and um, he basically had um, a, he became a single man in Alberta and was dating. And then his friend um, was saying, you should try... Um, pen palling. Yes, thank you. Pen palling. Have you ever tried that? He said no. And then so he helped him with this program where you pen pal with women overseas that are single. And so he met this one woman that he started pen palling to for three years. And then he finally decided to go visit her, which was Cebu, Philippines. And then um, he ended up checking into this hotel in, the, in Cebu. And then I think he met, he did meet this woman. But what happened was he checked in and my mom was working at the front desk. And I guess um, that's how they met. But what happened was that him and his friend that were at the hotel bar, who was German that he went with, um, ended up meeting this older gentleman that ended up like drinking with them and invited them to the island of Bahol and he was ended up being my mother's father so my grandpa and that's how and then and then so my mom came to the table and was like dad what are you doing like don't bother these guys but they're all drinking beers and that's how they met and then we go to Bahol and my sister and I come running out and my my dad and my mom are like, my mom's like that. Those are my daughters. And he's like, oh. And then I guess we just like really loved him. Like immediately we were hugging him and everything. And then um, they got we got married pretty quickly after that, actually. And he always told my sister and I that the reason he got married to my mom was because he loved my sister and I so much. And so we all moved to Canada. And my dad's like, he's a, he used to be the, the head of electrician or electress. Yeah, he was a head electrician person um and he you know he's like a tradesman he's like a guy's guy steak and potatoes guy he didn't really communicate like what it would be like to live in Canada to my mom who had never left like you know the Asia area and when we went it was it was early um winter and she hadn't experienced snow or anything or cold in that way ever and didn't realize how different it was going to be when we moved to Canmore, Alberta, <laughs> um, where I um, grew up. But uh, they they fought a lot because she was pretty shocked by not only that, but realizing how far away she was from her family. And the times were different then. Like there weren't that many um, non-white humans living in Canmore. And so she couldn't really find people like friends to relate to or anything like that. And so she felt like pretty confined at home. And she she was a, an accountant. She had an accountant degree as well, but couldn't use it in Canada kind of thing. So she was like, 
stuck at home. So they, so anyway, it wasn't working out. They were fighting a lot. And then they were like, you know what? This isn't working. Let's like, my mom wanted to go back home. And then, so we go to, um, and my dad was like, okay, well, this isn't working. Yeah. And then they go to Calgary, um, to the airport with a one-way ticket for my sister and I and my mom and my sister and I don't know what's happening. We're just like, yay, Mm -hmm. whatever. (laughs) How old were you Um, at this point? Uh, so when we arrived, I just turned five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it was within that same year, like pretty soon. (laughs) And then, um, uh, yeah. And then we go and then all the flights to the Philippines were canceled when we got there because there was a volcano that erupted, which was so random, but it happened. And then they like looked at each other and like, let's try this again. (laughs) And they're still married now. And here you are. <laughs> That's the still longest here. story. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think it's I think it's amazing because to your point, you know, everything that's meant to happen, like happened. I am a true Thank believer. Thank God. This year. <laughs> <laughs> Volcano erupted on that day. <laughs> you got yeah. your best friend. Yeah. <laughs> My life would be so different. <laughs> I feel you. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I love that. And so <laughs> tell me more about your mom. Yeah, well, she's a pretty smart lady. She's She's got a lot, you know, in, in her world that um, she, she was like kind of a rebel in the family only because, you know, it's pretty traditional over there and you weren't even supposed to really divorce or anything like that. So she had a lot of strength as a woman and as a mother to like leave the thing that wasn't working to pursue um, what was best for her kids. And that's why she did what she did um, in terms of that person. And then, uh, yeah, she, she is just like, I don't know. She's, she's just super strong of a woman. Mm. Yeah. Most immigrant moms are right. Right. It's a real thing. Yeah, It's a real thing. Super real. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, when I listen to your story, I just, I, it's so, some of it is similar to, to my mom. I mean, my mom, I was born in the Philippines as well. <laughs> and yeah, my, my mom also left something. And uh, we moved over to California when I was 10 months old. And <laughs> so, yeah, I, I know, I know what it's like to have an immigrant mom that um, is trying to start a new life yeah. elsewhere and yeah. all the things that they, they need to yeah. to do and be to do that like the the whole the cultural thing about school and stuff was such a f- it's a fun story to share now but back in the day when you're living in it you're like oh well I'm an odd man out like yeah. in terms of even like snacks that you prov- that they provide you when you're going to school or like like Hanmer was kind of cool because growing up during school you'd you do a lot of things like hikes and overnights like camping and stuff like just for school um in middle school like high school it was just kind of a fun outdoorsy type of school growing up uh and you know even those days where you all the kids would take would be hiking and then everyone would take out it's like snack break time and everyone's got their like mixed nuts and things like that I had my like cocktail weenies and I'm like anyone want to do shares in the tiny little can (laughs) And you're like, I have ketchup to yeah. you or whatever. <laughs> and no one ever wanted to share with me. And I was like, those gushers look cool. <laughs> and they're like, nah. <laughs> oh, you know what? I have, so when I was younger, there, uh, I probably was around five or six. There was this Japanese girl that was in my Cute. class. And her name, I still remember, remember her name. It was Kazuko. Aww. And uh, she had come to school and she had like a little tin that had these these pink things in it and I was like oh like what what is that and she's like do you want one and so I had one and it was actually like now when I reflect on it I'm like oh those were like pickled garlics oh yeah like, that is very adult yeah yes. I was like <laughs> wow because and I remember really liking it oh, yeah, yeah. and back then and which <laughs> surprises me because what kid really <laughs> likes that except for me and Kazuko yeah. Yeah. but I always thought that that was pretty cool that yeah. you know she had brought this other type of snack yeah. to school <laughs> and I got to try it and it was good and I realized that I have a wide eating palate so this is good you're like I'm an evolved uh, yeah I'm an, I'm an evolved child <laughs> I have an adult palate. 
That's so, so funny cute. though. I never thought it was like a bad thing ever. I was always just confused. I'm like, this stuff's so good. Why is no one sharing with me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're like, nope, thank you. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And so what were you like? Uh, I was pr- I was very, very, very positive and optimistic as a child. Um, it was like, I was down for anything. I was really just open and um, I was just hyped, I was stoked on whatever I was up to. And I like really wanted to be good at it, whatever it was. Um, so I did a lot of like extracurriculars. Like honestly, my parents pretty much left us alone. We weren't like, they weren't like, what are you guys doing today? It was kind of like we were just choosing our own way. Um, and so I just decided to like take up all these like different sports and um, work a few different jobs and, you know, do all these like personal goals and like be like make sure that I was like just wanted to be awesome like at all the things like even in like I loved school like I loved friends like I don't know like just being awesome and everything was like that was I think the most important in yeah. my world yeah yeah you were high on life even as yeah a kid. I think because yeah. she also told me about like the premature stuff and she she because mm. she's pretty like you know like immigrant moms are like really like not dramatic but they're like really emotional and like share they're like hardships and things like that so like growing up with that you're kind of like yeah and I'm here now let's do this <laughs> <laughs> so I think I had that energy because mm. of her sharing her world right yeah. right yeah and I remember you saying that you were a total like snowboarder like you, you yeah. hung out with the snowboard kids yeah I was um I used to be a lifty at sunshine um <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a really fun time because you just you know get out there in the hill I love the snow I love being in the you know winter like it's winter sports are great and yeah snowboarder life and you know you know I used to have a 78 LeBaron um growing oh my up God. <laughs> <laughs> bought it from a cop for 750 dollars in high school but uh it would have a Roxy sticker on the back window you know the center <laughs> you know like we all did back of then. course <laughs> Um, maybe so it's, this is reminding me of when I would, uh, drive it up to sunshine, um, to go work and it was rear wheel drive and it would always fishtail. But because of that, I would drive it in the winter knowing that it would do that. And so I would, I could like counter the fishtail. So going up this, these like really windy roads to the hill, it fishtail and I bring my friends cause I'd be the driver and they'd all freak out. I'm like, nah, man, it's cool. Like we got this and just do the other way. And it happened so many times, but yeah, it was, you it was made fun. it. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I was just going to say that you're still it. alive. <laughs> love that stuff. Or like, you know, it's Canmore small town winter. We'd like, you know, get a snow skate and like get a rope and then drag it, get the car and then just go down the street and like hit the banks. Like it was fun. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> So tell me about the path to um, AU Arts, which was OCAD back then, or ACAD, sorry. ACAD, yeah. yeah. ACAD back then. Um, and that's where you guys met. Yeah. We both didn't know each other until third year, so. Um, I thought it was second year. I thought it was type class. Isn't that? Second? I don't know. Second or third year. <laughs> I'm not sure. I heard in research it was your typography class. Yes. It sure was. <laughs> um and so we both ended up there on our own we both took a year off for different reasons see that was timing in that itself so was timing right. and uh you had to apply to get into the design program in the second year so we both ended up applying and both it's really hard in. to get into and they only take 60 students a year so you have to like it's a portfolio year one mm-hmm. and a portfolio year two mm-hmm. 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 and uh it was just i just decided to go into it I didn't overthink it I just was interested in the arts and I was just dabbling in seeing what I liked and um what was your reason for oh well because um I used to be like uh kind of a rendering type of artist and so first year was really fun because it's you know drawing class but really to meet fellow creatives because that wasn't a part of me in Canmore um and I earned for that and then I found like, I was like, I already know how to draw. I don't know how to design. So why not try second year? <laughs> like try to get into the design program because you're paying for it. So got to learn how, got to learn something new. Mm-hmm. And that was my reasoning. Mm. And then, yeah, through just. We had know, a meet cute. Yeah. 
I love that term. <laughs> the meet cute. It's like a, it's a movie moment. Yeah. What was the meet cute? Um, well, one one of us, I forget who was in front of the other in the desks, but it was typography class. And one of us, I forgot who, dropped an eraser and then the other one picked it up. <laughs> That's how we met. It's like clueless. It yeah. was. That was Sharon and Christian. And yeah. the- <laughs> totally. Um, and then, yeah, we just started hanging out and we, um, I don't know, I just ended up living in your house in the summer. <laughs> well, it was, it was like a lot of, um, of the <laughs> students lived in the same house mm-hmm. all, and it was super close to the school. And every now and then the, the rooms would, you know, people would rotate based on vacancy and stuff. Ah, okay. okay. It was like the art party house. Like mm-hmm. people, that was where you would go have a party. <laughs> I see. I see. Yeah. And actually I'm just going to jump back a little bit because I know I asked you Claire but I didn't ask you about art in your childhood so were you you were a drawer yeah yeah Mm. I was like obsessed that was part of my um uh my my own personal goals like I used to be really into um like Disney and anime and all that stuff so I wanted to at at first be like a animator for Disney like Lion King things like that and then I wanted to then make my own comics um and manga and things like that and then I um, just liked uh, Caravaggio so like a lot of renaissance style like rendered very beautiful like like exact um, replicated you know portraits and things like that so it was more just like personal um, obsession Mm -hmm. and none of my (laughs) friends in my friend group were creative or artsy or anything everyone was like a snowboarder person or you know, a sport person. So that was like my own kind of fun little secret. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess by nature, the snowboard and skate culture is quite, um, split, quite layered and creative, like art and music and fashion is all kind of woven into there. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's why I always really enjoyed it. Like throughout my life. Right this intersection of all things exactly but, okay okay so drawer when you were young <laughs> yes. and that was kind of like your secret superpower I just loved it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and so I used like that's how I got into ACAD and my parents didn't know what it was um or AU arts and I told them one day I was like I'm going to art school and they're like yeah okay well, <laughs> sure whatever you want to do yeah, that's that was great. Like, sweet yeah yeah okay, bye <laughs> and you guys both did visual communications Is yes that, with the, that was okay. the second year program yeah or se- second to fourth right so for people who are listening that may not know what visual communications exactly is how would you describe that everything is designed and Mm. it was very it's very uh um planned and the people behind that are visual communicators Mm. I don't know if that helps it's it's like um you're taught how to come up with a concept um deliver and present like it's just like from beginning to end you understand how to show a product or or an idea um through visual Mm. ways right um because it all all the classes were quite different so there's four different streams you could actually graduate in so it was um character design illustration graphic Graphic design design. and what was the fourth um there was one more. Anyway, no. Maybe, yeah, maybe. But you you can still you still learned and chose different classes within it, but then you picked one in the end. I see. To yeah. Harness into. Um, so that's why it was different from the fine art side. Fine art side was purely just painting and ceramics or whatever you were picking, and you could minor in other jewelry or whatever you wanted. But once you were in the program, you were just taking these classes only. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was t- um, definitely a way we learned our work ethic it was a really intense program (laughs) like whipped you you into shape whipped you into shape um so many things were due if you missed anything you failed pretty much so it was like no wiggle room of (laughs) you're serious you're taking this you're you're serious about it like 24 hour nights at king coast is a real thing Mm. we just hang out together (laughs) yeah (laughs) kind of need a buddy like a comrade in this yeah in this like (laughs) <laughs> battle to get your your degree yeah. so real <laughs> and then in fourth year it's when we were actually in the same class and we sat beside each other um and I think that's when our friendship really took off and it was like creative and friendship and of just 
fun friendship combined. Mm -hmm. Um, So that's where it all began. And you guys did art shows for fun. Yeah, we we had like a really fun Mm -hmm. time in Calgary during that time period, like the fourth year, because we were not only like finishing up like our, you know, school practice, but we we met, you know, like some other fun creatives that we then could come together and like make all these fun art shows, you know, for us and the community and just like have like these fun moments then. It was a really good time. And then um, after that, career wise, you both worked at design agencies. Yeah. Kind of like garnered obviously some learnings from there and more skills and things like that. And then you guys went brand side in the fashion world. So yeah. I'd love to explore this part of your lives and what you did, but also what you learned from this time in your life that is applicable to your guys' entrepreneurial ventures now. All I can say is, yeah, I thought art school was hard, but <laughs> working in fashion is quite, it's, it reminded me of that same cadence in a way, but yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we both <clears throat> first started in design agencies in Calgary, um, which was totally like digital space of yeah. <clears throat> design. Sorry, my throat. I worked in web and branding <clears throat> for a lot of male centric uh, brands in in this one agency it was like the Rolex style and the, the beer and the uh, cars and that kind of <laughs> yeah yeah you know so so it was really fun because it you know you have beer Fridays and it'd be like the the mad men energy but I liked it because it was just it's just a fun fun time and whilst still being creative and designing it was a fun juxtaposition from mm-hmm. there to to fashion mm-hmm, yeah mm-hmm. <clears throat> sorry I don't know why my throat and maybe tell me about your your like entrance into the fashion world. Um, yeah, uh, for for me, I actually um, wasn't looking. Mm-hmm. Um, what happened was uh, while while still working at that agency in in Calgary, um, a friend uh, brought a uh, uh, friends from Vancouver over, and we all went for beers. And then uh, I I got on with the girlfriend like pretty well, and then she. Um, uh, told me she worked at this one company in Vancouver and I was like wow that's so cool and then she sent their portfolio my portfolio to them without me knowing and then later they were like come for an interview and you're like wow yeah okay. I'm gonna do it <laughs> <laughs> why not <laughs> and then that's how Vancouver happened mm, yeah okay yeah. and then Claire you came over yeah shortly after Rachel um was like I need someone on my team and that ended up being me. I know the perfect person. <laughs> so this um, was Aritzia, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah we okay. first worked at Aritzia. And, you know, the the industry, fashion industry was so different. So the learning curve was really intense. Um, and I'm actually so thankful it shifted. Like, just I didn't even realize how much of a passion I had um, in that world compared to digital design. So it was like such an exciting time learning. We had turn, learned how to do textile design, placement prints. It was a totally different world. Um, I think what's cool about it, though, is that it's so artistic. Mm-hmm. Like like web and, and um, you know, advertising is one thing, but like doing prints, applied graphics, textiles is, is drawing, yeah. is art, it's painting. It's however you need to execute the aesthetic or the direction to then create this piece that then just happens to get applied on clothes. Like, how is that not a canvas, you know? Mm-hmm. It's pretty and cool. It was something we did, I didn't even realize I was missing, but I was like, this is what I want to do. It was so much more fun. Um, so that was a huge change in both of our lives that, yeah, made our whole lives where we are today. So that one moment, um, moving to Vancouver and mm-hmm. getting into fashion. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so it was Aritzia, you guys did, you had a stint at Lululemon too? Yeah. 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 And so what did you, what did you learn um, working in a corporate structure that you feel has been so helpful for you in your chapter now? Calendar. (laughs) Living by the calendar and timelines. Um, (laughs) But more realistically, I think honestly, it's navigating humans. Um, Because when you're working, you know, we work as a duo together as the weekenders and with that comes like different clientele and like different you know ways of thinking and what's really great that I I know I learned from working in that industry is that like how to navigate certain types of personalities 
to then like, you know, like, or have to showcase what your idea is to that personality because it really changes depending on how someone perceives something. Mm. Like some people are more visual, some people like can understand by you just saying it. So I think, I think that really helped. Yeah. I, yeah, of course. I, I, thinking about it, working at such large companies with such large teams. Yeah. That's like a management of energies and human dynamics on a, on a very, very large scale. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. And how, how about you, Claire? What did you feel like you, you really gleaned? Um, it was actually just a really, um, creative and fun, like we got to touch so many different pieces. So we did color stories and themes, creative direction, and coming up with all the print directions and then executing. We also work with the production people who work with the vendors. And <clears throat> so we're working with people overseas. And <clears throat> sorry. And and then it's also just presenting to all the whole teams and just showcasing your ideas properly. So it's just really helped us like communicate with people our large ideas and letting them understand what it would look like and what it can really be um so it just really helps helped us like um yeah explore different things and showing people what they don't even know that they're Mm. not having right yeah right it's like that alternative perspective Mm -hmm. where they're like oh okay like light bulb goes off so yeah it doesn't have to be fashion it could be whatever idea but we use that cadence to in our everyday now right Mm -hmm. it's like the conceptual to execution Mm. we learned that strategy through working in these places that that was like necessary yeah yeah and I guess that is necessary to concept to execution in order to run a really successful art practice you know and that's that's the thing that I've been sort of gleaning talking to friends who are artists or um, people who are artist consultants it's like you can have this talent and you can be creative and creating this art and that's amazing but how do you turn it into a viable business if that's what your your dream is and I imagine that all of the things that you learned are part of that it's like 80 20 to to be honest like your creativity I mean it's a hundred percent you but that's like kind of 20 percent of like the the way to get it out there to in a way let's just say actually 60 40 because yeah <laughs> but <laughs> there's more 30 70 um but but I'm, where I'm trying to go there is is like if if you aren't able to showcase that in in a way where you can like then live off your practice like it's hard like then you can't like put all of your time into that one thing that you really want to put all your time in you Mm, know what I mean yeah for sure for sure and so I know that you guys have um, the weekenders together but then you guys have your individual art practices as well and I'd love to know what those are if you could describe that to me we're so different so in different our personal, I was just gonna say personality that. so yeah. it's quite fitting <laughs> ying to the yang baby yeah <laughs> <laughs> you can explain yours rage um okay well my 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 work comes from that emotion and feeling that I kind of shared earlier with that optimism and you know just like how I grew up so really nature is involved in my pieces in terms of aesthetic but they're like rendered birds or you know um, foliage things that inspire me about not only the tropics but like the mountains so really um, and then pairing that all together with like really fun bright optimistic colors that's always been my my aesthetic no matter what the piece is there's something of that in there that's where I come from. <laughs> mm-hmm. So nature is like a huge. Yeah. Yeah. Is yeah. it like, is nature your church? A million percent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I go mm-hmm. to my happy place, I'm uh, looking at the sunset in the, at the ocean. No one's around and mm. it's giving me life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Claire? Um. Yeah. So yeah, same. I, mine goes back to my childhood too. So my parents always took us to contemporary museums and um, dances and I just definitely saw so much different kinds of art in growing up. And I think I actually am quite similar to my dad with the way we create art. So he's also 3D and abstract and so am I. Um, 
And I definitely like to tie in stuff with my past. So I like to question like why we're shaped in certain ways as people, um, what has effective, affected us, big and positive and negative things that may have happened us to it that have shaped our lives. And I like to showcase that in like the shapes and pieces I create. Um, and there's always meanings behind the pieces that I create, um, but they're abstract when you first look at them and then there's an explanation behind them. Um, and I love dealing with colors and contemporary spaces and colors. So they're really vibrant and colorful as well. Mm. So it's very different. <laughs> yeah, 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 it sounds like it. But it's good to have your own avenues, right? Like oh, it's yeah. beautiful to have something that's super shared and I'd love to know how you guys would describe your your shared practice. But yeah, I feel like you got to be true to like who mm-hmm. you always were. It's like your too. outlet, it's yeah. like your journal. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. that's it's a good like way. Your journal. Yeah. It's like it's how you it's how you communicate about what you see around you and your and the experiences that you have. So I think that's it's so I always am in such awe of of artists because I do feel like I'm quite creative, but they come, it, they're in different forms. Like I'm not, I'm not an excellent drawer, like not at all. Um, but there's other things I can do. Like I, writing is really something that I'm strong at. Um, and I can look at things and know what looks good. Mm-hmm. I just can't like produce. No, that. I think creativity can show up in yeah. tons of different ways. Mm-hmm. Creative I doctors think it's so cool. Creative accountants. Totally. You know? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> Even what you wear, like, mm-hmm. it comes out an in expression of how mm-hmm. you want to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's that's it, right? Like, it's creativity is not like you, it's not a boxed thing. No way. Yeah. No. yeah it's, it's so just, fun. It's kind of just like what you said. It's, it's like how you express. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And whatever it is, you know. Yeah, you're right. Like you could have like creative professionals, Mm -hmm. um, like Mm -hmm. like doctors, or it's just how they think about things or how they, yeah, approach things. So, yeah. So if you were going to describe weekenders and that aesthetic (laughs) and like that feeling and that movement, so what's really what's really fun about weekenders is that um, while we have you know like this these kind of things behind us that like built out how we do like our practices and how we experience like you know our, like do our aesthetic and projects and stuff what we want to bring the main thing we want to bring out of weekenders is how how we want people to feel so with weekenders like how whatever projects that we do and they're very diverse and it's so fun in that respect because there's the, that freedom but we essentially when people witness it in however form it's it is we want weekenders um to be this place of positivity, make you feel good when you look at it. <laughs> yeah, or in it, or feeling yeah. it, or wearing it. It's good vibes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you guys have, it comes in all different forms, right? Like you guys yeah. do installations, you guys do product and collaborative projects. Like done pop, Like music pop-ups. Anything yeah. is a canvas, baby. Yeah. I was just going to say that. that. Yeah, that's yeah. our mantra. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then it just really opens up the way you look at anything. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it could be what you're wearing what you're sitting on, what your space you're in. Yeah. Um, so it's like the aesthetics kind of can shift and change, but we do have a feeling we typically create together. Um, but yeah, it's always like a positivity inside, inside of it. Yeah. I mean, I think the last time that we talked, I was saying to you guys that whenever I take a look at something that you guys have like produced or are done I just think to myself yeah this is them (laughs) which is really cool like that's a feeling that's awesome you know it's like it's both your energies together and Mm -hmm. it's uh it's really it's really apparent yeah when I look at things um Mm -hmm. I'd love to go back for a second just because I I love thrifting and yes. I, I know that you guys, one of your like early ventures was you start, you guys had a, a vintage shop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So from the beginning, again, we always been entrepreneurs together. So our first company we created was called 
um, split pea vintage. Split pea vintage. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, we love thrifting, so we literally would go to Tim Hortons in the morning and then go thrifting for hours and fill up a cart and have so much fun trying everything on in the place. And it was like a whole fun thing. And then, yeah, we'd um, take photos and do really cool photo shoots. So that was probably the creative part of it. And then um, we'd sell it online for yep. years. Um, on uh shoot why on the I... ebay yeah. yes thank you i was like why? <laughs> on ebay baby yeah. <laughs> well we were talking about um nasty gal when yes. nasty yes. gal was on ebay exactly. i bought things from there before it became like a huge yeah. brand and, and totally. company yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 that was good time <laughs> yeah what do you think what do you think it is about thrifting that's that's so exciting like i'd love to hear your guys's opinion on it it's unique and you yeah. can style the pieces as you like. Um, and knowing that not another person would have that piece makes it kind of like so much more unique of a, of a piece that's just for you. Mm. I think that part's super yeah. special. And yeah. the chance that it like fits you, it's your color yeah. or whatever, like the chance. And then you're like, yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah it's total high for me I yeah. love it so much it's so true <laughs> so real yeah I mean I feel like that's the reason why I've I've always thrifted too I mean like all things but I do love it because you're right like the pieces are so unique like I have a few dresses from the story of things on commercial and I'm just like nobody is gonna have yeah, this like and I exactly. love that yeah and then there is something about purchasing something that someone like loved for a little oh. bit of time and that you can just sort that. of extend the life of this thing <laughs> because most of the stuff back then is was made really well yes it's yeah. not, it's that's not why it still crap. exists now <laughs> <laughs> totally totally so I'm loving this resurgence of like Gen Z really <laughs> like really loving understanding thrift yeah and mm. good thrift not just like yeah you know real talk real I'll talk <laughs> and I just also just as we get older, I just want to get weirder. So, like, <laughs> I'm hoping we find more weirder pieces <laughs> as we go. I love it. Do you so think, good. Do you think you guys – is is thrift more of an expression for you guys now? Or do you, do you ever think totally. like you would – Yeah. We explore? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Expression. For sure. Well, it's just kind of, like, adds to the, the vibe that you're putting out. So, like, if you find some weird things, you're like, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. I'll with these things, yeah. <laughs> So I was doing a, a little research and found a quote from each of you. You had done a previous interview. And and both of these sentiments that you both had sound – they're both very similar but have different feels, like a different way okay. of expressing it. But, Rachel, you said, don't dip your toe, cannonball into your next endeavor. Honey pee. <laughs> and then, Claire, you said, the hardest thing is to start. Just start. And so for me, those things are very similar and just said – that's in, true. In different ways. You, both, both of you are, are saying just go for it. So I'd love to explore like this concept of just going for it and trying. Is this something that you both both feel have been part of your personalities? Like 100%. F it. I'm just going to give it a try. Oh, yeah. That's I think so. 100%. Like we definitely go away um, different ways about it. Or like Rachel is the cannonball and I'm a bit more like – methodical but in the end we still want the same thing we want to just like life is so short we need to try and do all the things that we want to do now yeah. and, um, it, and nothing is permanent yeah you know like say if you are working full-time who's ever listening to this <laughs> and you're like you know what I want to try something different on my own and try this one thing you can and if it doesn't work out you can always go back like nothing yep. is permanent you know, mm -hmm. like that, that I think helps in the realm of, oh no, if I do this, it's seeing how big it or little, it, it's just a perspective yeah. and how mm. it can change your life and how scary you make it in your mind pretty much. Right. 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 Um, but yeah, it's been like, so Rach definitely, she quit before me and I, she was patient and let I me took take like the top of the building and jumped yeah. into the pool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we knew we wanted to do this weekenders together mm -hmm. um and yeah so I just needed a bit more time and then when I quit um mine was more like a belief that mm -hmm. it was gonna work out in the realm of like I know it's not like fully set up yeah but I'm gonna just go off and focus on that and mm -hmm. believe in it and then yours was more in the realm of 
I just make need sure a bit more time. Ducks in a row. Yeah, I need my ducks. Mm-hmm. I feel good. Like none of them is wrong. No, they're just who we are. Yeah. Um, and then when we quit, it was just like full tilt because I've been waiting so long, <laughs> you know. And before that, like. I was working full time and then we'd go to the studio till 10 p.m. Like it was exhausting. And like at a certain point, you're like, we got to make a decision and go for it. And our first project together was painting a skate park in Calgary um, and painting a mural on it. And it was like the perfect send off to this new place, (laughs) our our world together. (laughs) Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, Yeah, it's kind of like an homage to where you guys came from Mm -hmm. and also like, yeah, like sort of like the world that you Mm -hmm. found yourselves in growing up and that's a a huge part of you. Yeah, I I mean, I I love how you both said like neither one of them is right or wrong. Like Mm -hmm. everyone's just different in how they will – you know, yeah. cannonball or take that <laughs> that step. A million percent. But I do, I, you know, having taken a leap of faith on myself mm-hmm. like two years ago, I know what you mean about just you have to just believe that it's going to work out. Like, and that workout could be anything. Like, it could be, you know, it worked out and it's now a successful thing or it worked out because you tried, you, you tried yeah. and you learned percent. a lot of things yeah. and now you have – because straight up, there are a few things that we were very, very passionate about that we started and tried and executed, mm-hmm. you know, and spent a, a good amount of time on these projects and realized at the, you know, during projects, you were like, this is not what we want to do at all. Mm. Yeah. We've definitely like from the beginning of Weekender. So what we knew from the beginning is we're an artist duo and we wanted to create different projects um, but we started out more doing print textiles because that's where we came from fashion. And um, like accessories. Accessories. Mm-hmm. We made our own product. Mm-hmm. Um, and now we're almost like full swing into mural world. More interactive. Interactive. Immersive. Huge yeah. pieces. Mm-hmm. And we almost barely touch those other parts. So we still do them and we still love them, but we would have never guessed where we would have been today right it's crazy right. you just mm-hmm. kind of go with and then you know honestly every I, I highly suggest to you doing like a very very awesome like brainstorm at the beginning of the years just be like what do you want to what do you want to do this year like what's something fun and it's not like oh well because of last it's like no what do you want to do yeah. and then we do it every actually year like accomplish a yeah lot of we, we put we goals of really hard things yeah. like, like that's not attainable and then you're like what <laughs> it happened yeah. and so yeah we do it every year and try and hit new things so actually one of our goals was murals yeah and then it blew into something huge that was like years us. ago yeah. yeah and you can't help you but walk a lot of those forward now. like you can't mm-hmm. help but walk toward it because yeah. totally you, you put it out put there put it out there yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah there's this um there is this basically uh, she's quite revered in the design world her name is Debbie Millman I don't I don't know if you've ever heard of her but she's responsible for like 20 percent of like the major brands out there and, and the design behind it but she has a really interesting podcast and she's been a really interesting podcast guest on some some major shows cool and I always love listening to her and she has this thing called the 10-year plan for a remarkable life mm. she teaches at NYU I believe mm. And she makes all our students do this. Aww. And she said the percentage, and this is this is you writing out the perfect day in your life 10 years from now in great, great detail. Who is there? What does it smell like? What are you wearing? What are you doing? And she said almost like 80, 90% of her students will call her or message her <laughs> 10 years down the road and be like, it came true, Debbie. Oh, I love that. <laughs> I believe that. So, But yeah, I mean, just like you said, when you put it down or you say it out loud or you really believe in it, then you can't help but taking those steps in that direction because it's like out there. Mm-hmm. You've declared it. Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. I'm a firm believer in that. I yeah. Believe, like, yeah. That's and awesome. I mean, other people have done it. You witness other yeah. people achieving their dreams all the time. What, what makes it, what makes you any different, mm-hmm. you know? So I think it's awesome that you guys are, that's such a great idea brainstorming at the beginning of, of each year and it's fun. in that way yeah, yeah. cuz you, you don't limit yeah. yeah yeah like it's not limitless yeah. it's limitless yeah like what's oh, the like that. obscenely fun thing you want to do yeah. <laughs> yeah and it's not like oh what did we do good the year before no. like it doesn't that matter. was last year yeah. that don't matter 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we make it a day, so we'll go to a restaurant and have a good meal and hang out, and then we'll bring paper and pens. Mm-hmm. And, and it just... can even be personal. It's like, what do yeah, you want to do in the world? We do both. Yeah. Because um, sometimes that helps in the, like, they help each other, you mm-hmm, know, the personal mm-hmm. and the. And it's the nice work. to know each other's just what's going on because then we can help each other. And if maybe something comes up, we'll be like, you do that for this mm-hmm. instead because that makes more sense. Like, it's just that we know what's on each other's radar for right. what's right. important to us that year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I have a question about artistry in general. Um, how do you guys, because I'm really, really curious about this, and how do you guys as artists keep on creating the work you do in the style that you do without ever feeling a threat of um, getting tired of it eventually or like getting bored with the style? Like how do you evolve as artists while staying true to like the core of who you are as an artist? It's a good question. I think um, honestly sometimes, well, a if you're kind of over – an aesthetic or or certain colors or something I think we naturally just kind of steer away from that when we are developing into a new piece like a collaborative piece um but then sometimes when there's like a client in mind or they we know that they have a certain you know palette or aesthetic that they want to work into um we like build it out in that way while adding new elements that we could then be like excited this is this is really a cool piece too like you should kind of think about this as part of that um new aesthetic you know so Mm -hmm. it's kind of like sharing it in that way if that makes sense I feel like also so whenever we get a project we always do the same cadence so we'll always have a brainstorm and come up with themes and different ideas for the project and we'll show each other and you can oh, tell right away if you're feeling oh, this something is true. This or is not. So much, this is true. And yeah. um, either one of us will be like, nah. nah. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't even actually show the client if yeah. we're not feeling it yeah. because we're the ones who have to make it. So yeah. Yeah, um, everything we put out, we're actually yeah. hyped hyped on. Yeah. yeah. So we, it's Which nice. It's important, right, yeah. to sell yeah. it. Yeah. And sometimes, like, I'll be really feeling something and then Rachel will be like, I'm me. Well, like, we'll yeah, always yeah. work it out to make yeah. sure it's working for both of us enough yeah. where we're yeah. happy. Yeah. Um, but the, so. the no is when we're both like, mm. you can even tell, you almost don't even have to say, yeah. it's just like silence. We're like, okay, <laughs> moving on. No one got excited. <laughs> the silence is deafening. It says everything. So <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So realness actually is the most important thing. Mm. If you're having an, a work duo, artist yeah. duo moment, you, d- you just got to put out what you really feel or else later you're going to be like, oh, Mm. why did I not say anything Mm -hmm. I feel like it's so easy though like none of us get offended or anything it's just like okay next yeah we'll just do this instead or we'll like what's missing why is this one not there enough we'll like what if we combine these two ideas it's like a lot of just saying our ideas out loud and I feel like we always find like a cool medium for the project yeah right yeah Yeah. it's it rules yeah there's like some kind of flow that you guys have that just kind of leads Mm -hmm. you to where you need to be yeah. Okay. That's that's awesome. Yeah. It's it's always fascinating for me to know like how an artist's mind works, has how a creative creative's <laughs> mind works, and so yeah, I, I was just I do, really curious. I do have to say, just to add to that, mm. um, like that's in the respect of like say if we're working like client based pieces, but like like I know in my own creative craft, I'll just kind of do whatever and I'm like I don't like that but I'll just keep going like it's so different because it's for yourself you know what I mean I don't know that's yeah. me personally yeah no it's different definitely doing st- stuff alone versus together like also why we love working together is there's so many different like as a business you have your own business there's so many different things that you have to deal with that aren't that are part and it's just like so nice to have someone else there supporting whatever the role the like to get through stuff yeah. Mm. It. yeah it's it's wild so we divide and conquer that part as well so we have our different strengths um and just make sure we're covered on that part too mm. yeah I don't know how people do it <laughs> all the time you <laughs> I'm so impressed babe for real <laughs> it's so and real. if you need any us anytime <laughs> I get it ask us. <laughs> yeah um, yeah so if you are going to give an emerging artist any advice, 
about life, not mm. about art, what would you say? Go for it. <laughs> yeah. Like no regrets because the only regret you're going to have is wishing that you went for it. Even if later on you're like, oh, well, at least I went for it. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Yes. Yeah. That's my. And I, I, I always say this, but I always say uh, follow your intuition. Um, it's like your body knows before you know all what's really important to you um, through art and just like if you're in the right space or place in your life, like just listen to what you're actually saying to yourself because you know <laughs> deep down. Mm. Yeah. So and, yeah. And be kind. Yeah. Because you know what? Uh, pride and stature, none of that means anything if people don't want to like hang out with you or, you know, like everyone's got something to offer. So judgment shouldn't live in that type of space. And it's nice to be nice. Mm. Yeah, we, we hate the ego. No yeah. ego. No what ego. is that? Get out of yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> ego is just protection, you know? Yeah. It's like it's, yeah, it's it's how people armor themselves, which is like can be very unfortunate in, you know, work situations or life situations. But, yeah, I tr I'm trying to look at ego from a softer place, you know, when I see it flare That's up. Nice. And others, I'm like, That's nice. Oh, Okay. I see you. Of understanding. Like, there's like a bit more understanding. I'm like, oh, I see. There's something has tr like mm. triggered you or I've triggered you mm. or something. And I'm just going to give you space for that. Yeah. Mm. And I feel like most of the time we try and meet people in an uh, open space yeah. where I feel like if we f show our true selves, most of the time those barriers go away with yeah. other people. Mm. If you show you don't need to have our ego out I mean you know don't either kind of thing so um we try and make that space for people yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. show by example I guess mm -hmm. like I'm usually yeah, your friend way. until I'm not kind of, kind of mm. thing. it yeah. goes that way versus the other you know when you're like until totally yeah 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 I like that a lot <laughs> well just a couple of more questions for you guys yeah. um one question is what have you learned from one another in this oh, very oh. long friendship. <laughs> what has Claire taught you? What has Rachel taught you? Um, I like we're saying, Rachel, we balance each other out. So I've definitely learned to go for things faster and take, like, like I say, go with my intuition. But it's just like trusting to just, if we want to go for it, go for it. And it doesn't have to be this long drawn up thing um that makes sense <laughs> see my my thing I was gonna say is be uh she taught me to be a little less reactive um to kind of like chill in the moment and like think about the the piece and then act accordingly because mm. that's just a fiery because I think we're both who I am a little both too much on <laughs> on <the> either <laughs> spectrum <laughs> yeah. and we have now a comfortable yeah, space where, where we've both brought in each other so <laughs> It's nicer for both of us, I think. Yeah. yeah. Ah, it's amazing to have that. Yeah. yeah. No. How lucky. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's pretty rare. Like. <laughs> no, I'm so thankful to have yeah. found my creative. We'll talk. Uh, partner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're partners, baby. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm so thankful. Like, I know what we have is very special. Yeah, and it's real. It's really fun. Yeah, I think that's the key. We'll never, we'll, we'll yeah. stop working with each other when it stops being fun. Mm -hmm. We always say that because it's, yeah. it's like, and what's the point? <laughs> and our friendship always comes first. Yes. Right. Okay. That's actually very, that's our number one rule. Nothing else really matters. Oh, oh, yeah. Obviously, we love to create stuff, but that's yeah. more important than mm. anything else for yeah. us. Mm -hmm. And we always make jokes that our significant others are like our plus ones <laughs> of like our... It's true. <laughs> and they know it. <laughs> like we're going to be old ladies that has like the house tunnel. Yeah. <laughs> and Evan will build it for us. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's going to be real. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Just a few, few more questions. Two more. Um, listening to your childhood stories it's very apparent to me that you had quite supportive parents when it came to like your art your artwork and and going that path and just kind of being who you are and so my question is what would you like to say to them right now oh um 
I love my parents so much. I'm so thankful. They're um, they even help us to this day. Like when we go to Calgary, we get to stay with them, and they help in any way they can. Um, so yeah, I love them so much, and um, yeah, thankful. Thank you for letting me try all this craziness. If I'm sure a lot of parents would be scared if their child just quit their full time and and went to be an artist. But um, yeah, they just believe and support where, where they can. So I'm so thankful. Mm. They're awesome. Yeah. And I think um, uh, I want to thank my parents because they didn't really understand what it was all about until they saw one of my artworks up at Aritzia. And that's when they finally were like, oh, this is what you do, you know? And that didn't bother me growing up because they just gave me the freedom to do whatevs. But it was in that moment, they were like, okay, so you're an artist. And I was like, thanks guys. Like never once said no, but there wasn't that full understanding until that moment. So I think I want to thank them for just like letting me do what I wanted, even though they didn't fully understand it until they did. Mm. If that makes sense. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, it makes makes a lot of sense. And my final question that I ask everybody on this show, with what you do, what is it that you want to leave behind in the world? Just a positive energy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I want someone to smile like when they see what I did. They're just like, mm, it makes me feel good. That's what I can say. Yeah. I think we also want to continue creating this community of just positivity in art, but because mm-hmm. there's some, sometimes it's not, there's like ego and pretentious and just stuff in it um, that we just continue this positive community and it, I hope it c- continues past us and it, it like is contagious and I hope it just keeps going through other people. Mm. That's, that's, that'd be awesome. I love that. Ladies, thank you for being here. Always enjoy our chats and just like the energy that the three of us seem to have. So real. I know. Thank you. Which is really amazing. Yeah, this has been amazing. Yeah. If people want to follow you, find you, where should they go? Um, Mostly our Instagram is our recent projects and fun up to date stuff. So at Weekenders for Life, W K N D R S, no vowels. The for life is normal. <laughs> F-O-R-L-I-F-E. Because people might think there's the letter or the number or something. Uh, Weekenders for life, baby. <laughs> for life. <laughs> well, thank you for all of the joy and positivity you bring to every room Aww. through your art. I can't wait to see you guys continue to create and <laughs> hopefully we'll create together at some point. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's on the radar. Yeah. Yep. We put that in the universe. It's building. Um, we'll find the the right, right moment, the right moment. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah for sure well I'm excited for it already it's, hap- it's happening <laughs> yeah oh yeah that's not an issue <laughs> it's really um, the timing yeah. yes yes <laughs> we'll make it happen thank you ladies thanks thank so you. much <laughs> As always, thank you for being here and for listening. To learn more about today's guest, visit the episode page for show notes and links on wearethecraft.com. You can find the entire podcast archive here or explore more conversations with past guests on Spotify and Apple. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on these platforms, including YouTube, to get notified when new episodes drop. Any likes and shares on social media are deeply appreciated too. Sound and audio engineering for the show are by Andrew and Jay Bagaspis. All guest portraits and images are by Juno Kim. Appreciate you all and see you again soon.